Well, folks, it's time for another Sunken City card review, a little shorter this time around, but I wanted to talk about this cool new Naga Legendary for Druid. This is Hedra the Heretic. It's a seven mana, four, five Naga. Battle cry for each spell you've cast while holding this, summon a minion of that spell's cost. So much like the other Naga cards we've seen so far, uh, rewarded for playing spells while this is chilling in your hand. And it's a pretty big reward this time around, because essentially, if you play some bigger spells, this is going to give you a board full of pretty sizable random minions. It falls in that mid to late game wide board dump bomb summon kind of card. Uh, most recently we've seen like Baron Glacier filling that slot, but this harkens a bit back to cards like Dragon Caller Alana for Mage or even King Feoris back in the day where you're rewarded especially for big spells. Now this works a little better than those I would argue because it's number one cheaper so it could come down sooner in a game. Uh, but also, you don't have to hold cards in hand like with Feoris. You can still just play your stuff and do the cool things you want to do and then have this as a reward, essentially, a little bit later in the game. And of course, for Druid, they've had success with larger spells many times in the past. They are going to be losing access to some of the better ones right now, like Survival of the Fittest will be rotating from standard format. But I'm sure there will be more to replace those and give Hedra some ammunition to build those monstrous boards. Now, I do think this card has some challenges in, in regards to lining this up and timing it well. Uh, essentially, if you want to play this at like seven mana as fast as you possibly could, you're not often going to have a bunch of big spells in the pool just yet. You might have some smaller stuff, the you know smaller ramp cards, some card draw stuff as you move towards seven mana. So you might be something like two and three and four mana minions, best case. I'll argue that's still not bad in some matchups. Just playing Hedra that summons like three or four mid-game minions, that will be enough to stabilize in a lot of situations. If a board just if a matchup doesn't have any kind of wide board removal, that could be the bomb that wins you the game, especially if you have any kind of wide board support cards that follow up with buffs or burst damage. That might just be enough. Uh, now, if that doesn't work out well and you do have to kind of sit on this for a while, it might come down a little bit too late. Like your opponent may already be executing their combo in condition or may have already done the thing that this just isn't good enough for. They may have drawn into the removal of the brawl or whatever it is that's necessary to deal with that sort of board. So I think this has to find a good window where it's big enough, but not too late in order to really, really succeed. The other challenge for this card, of course, is that it has to be in hand while you're playing those cards. So if you do happen to top deck this late in a game, it's gonna be dead. It doesn't remember the cards that were played earlier in the game. It's for the spells cast while holding it in your hand. So I think there's a little bit of risk there that if you top deck this, you might need three or four more turns to really pump it up to make it playable. I'm very nervous uh, that half of games, this card's gonna be kind of useless. Some decks might say like, oh, this is just a bonus. I got a lot of cool spells anyway. I'm going to toss this in as a occasional payoff that steals a game here and there. That might be viable. Other decks might have more de decisive game plans they have to move towards and win conditions they move towards where this doesn't really advance that cause and is kind of a dead card in some cases. So that's a risk that this just sort of falls to the wayside because it's not quite compelling enough in its own case. It has those low roll situations where it falls apart. And uh, other times it may just not be decisive enough because your opponent has the removal by the time you get this thing into tip top shape. So challenges overcome. That's it. It's still just one of those cards that plays a lot of stuff. Druid can ramp successfully. Druid has big spells to play towards. So I'm not saying this card is doomed at all. Just that it's going to take a pretty specific deck, I think, to line it up very well. This is not a general use case kind of card that every Druid finds a lot of success for as far as I'm concerned. And what do you know? Look at this, a seven mana spell for Druid, a big spell to uh, use uh, with your Hedra. So this is Miracle Growth, seven mana nature spell for Druid. It's going to draw you three cards and it's going to summon a plant with taunt and stats equal to your hand size. So minimum, I guess this will be a three, three if you had an empty hand when playing this, but very often you're, I think you're going to get a sizable taunt 
out of this, which of course helps you negate some of the tempo downside of spending seven mana to merely draw some cards. And the fact that it has taunt also means there's some defensive utility there as well. So you hopefully won't just insta die because you're spending your mana on drawing cards. And Druid, of course, has been very successful with cards that draw you a bunch of things. This is in that overgrowth mold of old. It's a nice little rhyme <laughs> for free. Uh, now, it doesn't draw as much, but I would argue it's a little bit more defensive in some ways, too. The five health heal was always nice on overgrowth, but this body might be even more frustrating to deal with and can be even more proactive if you manage to be ahead in the game as a threat on board. So this is a card that can like help you find your legendary Naga uh, so that it's in hand sooner. If you have a lot of card draw and a lot of big spells all going together, that's going to make sense as a package. And with cards like Guff, of course, as you get up to, say, 20 mana, spending seven mana to draw three cards and still having a lot of mana left to play other big spells is a strategy that starts to make sense. So a bunch of big spells in a pile with a bunch of ramp through Guff. We are losing cards like Overgrowth, so... We don't know yet if that's going to be replaced with other options of ramp. It's looking like Guff Hero card right now might be the main way to get ramp, but I expect it, if not immediately, at least somewhere down the road, Druid will get more ramp to make sure they're able to play these higher cost spells and Naga legendaries uh, pretty easily. I do worry three cards isn't maybe quite enough. You might just want like more uh, hyper efficient, cheap card draw. If you compare it to say like Guess the Weight, for instance, you know, that was often drawing you two for two mana. You may not care that much about the extra body. A lot of decks just want cheap draw to get to a real specific win condition as opposed to this, you know, bonus taunt body that may or may not be particularly uh, compelling for some game plans. So a little bit of undirected overhead cost here, I guess, with this draw. But I think the synergies and upsides uh, that are teased and the ability for Druid to spend a lot of mana pretty easily still make this a fairly compelling card. Hedra the Heretic is a three-star card. Miracle Growth is a four-star card. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for review number three. Of course, share your thoughts on these cards in the comments below. Thanks much, as always, for watching. Stay tuned for more reviews in the very near future. And uh, until next time, game on.